Now, in a career spanning nearly 40 years at BP, John Brown rose from apprentice to chief executive, becoming the so-called Sun King. But his position as the boss of one of Britain's biggest companies came crashing down. He resigned in 2007 after he was found by a judge to have lied in court about the details of a gay relationship. He had kept his sexuality a secret, fearing that he had no other choice in the macho world of the boardroom. Now, in his book, The Glass Closet, Lord Brown tells his story and his hopes of helping others who find themselves in a similar situation. And he joins me now. Welcome. Thank you. Why did you decide to tell the story now? To help others. I really do want to make this into more of a movement than just a book, uh, to let people know what happened to me so that they don't get into the same mess, uh, to tell stories of role models, which is really important, so people feel that they can gain confidence by others who've come out and, not, and bad things have not happened to them. So telling stories is really important. And part of the book is to open a website called glassdosit.org, which shares stories and, and people are asked to put stories on it. And the third, very important, is to remember that the world is mostly straight. And so this is also a letter to straight people, in particular to straight CEOs, <laughs> uh, saying, of which there are plenty. In fact, in the S&P 500, there are no gay, out gay oh, They don't exist, like, rather like Premier League footballers. There's no, feeling, no, no gays uh, whatsoever. By definition, uh, and, but not by reality. Right. Uh, but it's a letter to them to, to say, you can do something about this and make it easier for LGBT people to be themselves in corporations. Why, uh, let me take you back then. W was there a moment of decision when you said, I've got to keep quiet about this, I can't tell anybody? Did you just, did you know uh, as a young man, this would be really bad for your career? I did. Uh, I knew it may not have been the reality, but I convinced myself that it was going to be bad for my career and bad for my friendships and relationships. Uh, I came from a generation where, of course, it was a criminal act to do something uh, homosexual. Uh, I come from a background. My mother uh, was um, given... She was a survivor from Auschwitz. She used to say, don't be a minority, because bad things happen to minorities when the going gets tough. Uh, and she believed that. She had good evidence, too. Uh, and so I came from that sort of background. But then I kept two lives secret. Uh, one life, a great secret. I felt like James Bond in some ways, another <laughs> public. Uh, and it was easy when I was young. It was kind of a thrill. But as time goes by, you can't get out of that trap. And if somewhere it's going to hit It'll the wall. It'll blow up. But... Uh, did that, I don't quite know how to ask, ask this question, did that make you quite a boring chap? Because you couldn't talk then about your family life, you couldn't show photographs of the wife and the kids and all that sort of stuff. You just, had that whole part of you had been excised out of your public sphere. I, I became what, they, what I think the British call reserved. <laughs> uh, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, a woman who's a bit older than I am, wife of a friend of mine, uh, I discovered so much about her. She, I talked to her and she said, well, you were reserved, but I always knew something was up. And what I found out about her was in the early 70s, she was a leading knight in the campaign for homosexual equality and the editor of an amazing magazine called Lunch. Do you think it's changed now, then? Because you say you want to share stories, and that's one of the ways of breaking down prejudices, because, you know, if you look back over the last 30 years, the, the AIDS and so on, suddenly people realised that the person they worked next next to was gay or a yep. partner was gay or they lost something. So, so society has changed dramatically. Has business changed? Society's changed. It's, there's no doubt society's changed. Uh, but business has been slow uh, and it's been slow on a whole variety of fronts, including, for example, the role of women in business, uh, because women have not made it to the so-called C-suite and it's tough to get enough women on corporate boards. So. Gender is a problem, LGBT, uh, gay people, even behind that. So this needs a big shove to get it in the right direction, which means CEOs, leaders, leaders have to do something about this. Can I ask you just a couple of wider questions? I'll get back to the book in a moment. But, you know, in terms of BP itself, BP rebranded, you know, the, the sunflowers and the green and beyond petroleum and so on. Do you think that actually works? I mean, you know, people look at a big corporation which produces carbon and you're always going to be seen as that it's big oil you're a bit nasty 
I think people think like that and, and they have good evidence to, to believe that. But also there is evidence that if you change a mindset of a company, it moves with the times and it moves uh, into a new future. You know, it, every oil company in the world has to go into lighter carbon, more gas than oil. It has to be much more efficient on how it uses its products and how it sells its products to its customers. And I always believed it should also get into new forms of energy, such as renewable energy. So it's so, possible to change and tell I people it's so. changed up to a point? I think so. But it, it's, a, it's like it's changing. It's a big, big super tanker. It changes, uh, takes a long time to change direction. A long, you, long time. When, when you watch as an outsider, having gone through your own personal crisis, what happened at uh, the Gulf oil spill and the way BP handled that? Did you, did you tear your hair out? Did you see it was going terribly wrong? So what, what, what I really thought about were the people because I knew every single person involved and I saw them come on TV and I felt bad for them uh, and I, I really felt bad for the whole team in BP and how it affected them and said, will they have enough, uh, will they have enough confidence to get up and fight? Uh, and actually they're beginning to do that and I think that's good. But, I mean, the Tough whole thing could have problem. gone down the tubes. I mean, te I, I talked to a number of oil companies at the time, and they said, technically, it having happened, we'd have handled it kind of similarly. But what was said by BP was so offensive to so many people. I uh, want my life yeah, back, was what I Tony mean, there's lots of, said. There's lots of things which could have been done better. Could have been done better. What I think is remarkable is this company's undertaken, it had a big body blow, and it's standing up and it's going forward. That's important. It shows the scale and strength of... Uh, the company. And just a final thought, if, if you're uh, a young gay man or woman uh, in business now, what's your advice to them about how to handle that private part of their life? How should, how should they deal with that? I would say rather glibly, if in doubt, come out. Uh, I really mean that. I, I think look at the case histories, talk to people who've been in that position, and you will find almost nothing, there's almost no cases where it really went badly wrong. And actually you'll be a better person as you can bring two parts of yourself into one and be yourself, be your authentic self at work. I mean, there's tons of studies by academics which show that, you know, productivity increases by well over 30%. If people can be who they are rather than be a, a pale projection of something else when they come to their place of work. Laura Brown, thanks very much for coming Pleasure. and talking to me.